hello ladies and gentlemen welcome to mercury models we're not professional but we get pleasing results got a brand new self healing mat new lights so it must be a brand new channel that's right you found me I'm new to the YouTube I've watched lots of videos and I followed a lot of great people and I've received some support on some of the modeling and weathering I've done myself to create a channel so here we are I'm a father of two I'm married been married for 12 and a half years to a great woman I have a full-time job so YouTubing is not something I'll be able to do consistently I'll be able to do some videos here and there um, pretty much I just want to help teach people how to get more enjoyment out of the hobby I am going to focus on a lot of model railroading but I'm also going to do some plastic model building but model railroading is where I feel the most comfortable with some of the models that I've done in the past for instance like this P-47 it's my first model aircraft that I've built I've used a lot of newer techniques on it that uh, I haven't used before and um, I've learned a lot since then I feel I've could do a lot better job if I were to do it again but that's part of this hobby is trial and error learn from your mistakes and, and make it better I uh, really enjoy modeling World War II stuff all your machines of war I'm a really big fan of the World War II machines so here's my first aircraft I thought it turned out you know, pretty decent another thing that I've done recently is I figure out where I put it there it is following one of my uh, favorite modeling channels it would be Tony with Helgen 35 he recently built this Star Wars ATST and I really enjoyed watching him build and uh, following this build on YouTube that I purchased the kit myself and built it following his techniques doing a lot of step by step and following along in his videos and uh, I feel it turned out pretty well I'm really happy with how it turned out and it's obvious that he's a good teacher because just following along made a made it look good by my hand a lot of the tick techniques and tips that I've learned from him I've carried over to model rarity and basically it's the same principle it's plastic you want it to look as realistic as possible so you just follow the same techniques obviously the base needs some work but it's not that hideous brown color anymore this uh... this base will probably be something that i'll do in the future add some uh... ground effects some dirt make it look a lot better this is a snap-on snap together kit so I can remove the top and show you my interior that I've detailed Let's see if I can get you zoomed in here without shaking you to death there we go yeah. interior detail turned out really good one of the new techniques that I've learned from Tony that he has learned from one of his 
friends over in United Kingdom is a gunk wash and that's basically taking an oil paint mirroring it on everything and then wiping it off and it gives you a good weathering dirty look and that's that's a lot of the dirt that you can see inside this cockpit is something that is from that te technique and that's something that I will uh, demonstrate in the future for sure it worked really well there's there's some applications where you, it's not practical but it's it, it works and yields some pretty good results so that's something that I will share in the future for sure so there's my ATST move that off to the side once again as I mentioned World War II and the machines are something that I really enjoy this is my first ever tank that I've ever built it's a American Sherman did built this kit did a lot of the weathering some paint chipping rusting some dirt and mud on, down on the tracks I didn't do a lot of the actual mud itself the mud is just paint since then I've been studying some techniques on doing some mud and don't look at the bottom I didn't do the bottom I'm I'm not I know that's that's not a good thing but I cheated so one thing that I want to plan on doing with you guys is uh, I want to build a diorama using this and on that diorama I've purchased this zoom you out just a little bit here it's a farm wall entrance by mini art and it's a plastic model kit that I think uh, would go well for a diorama use that with my uh, Sherman here so that'll be something fun that we can do together learn continuing with my tanks this tank pretty obvious what it is it's one of my favorites a Tiger 2 it's a, a work in progress I'm not completed anything on it yet really uh, just the paint job is where I am uh, I still have the accessories you know, shovels and tools and tow cable to go here I hand painted the uh, the camouflage here with an airbrush all the little camouflage dots are decals so I, I cheated on that there's some uh, photo edge parts back here on the grill these, these grill covers photo etch that's my first application of photo etch sounds pretty fun it wasn't too difficult so I was able to successfully do it so that's something else we can do in this channel let's complete this Tiger 2 and also I would like to do a diorama with this and I bought a couple couple items that we can use for that diorama some German troops there anti-tank pack 40 gun here those uh, I think those would look pretty good on a diorama with this Tiger 2 so that's something else we can complete as a group in the future of this channel so that's some of my modeling now what I want to show you is some of the work that I've done and some of the reasons why I'm going to be doing this channel with you and that's model railroading 
So this this is probably my my this is my most recent weathering on an HO scale locomotive and uh, this is the piece that I was showing Tony at Helgen his YouTube channel and he uh, really encouraged me to do a model railroading weathering channel so this piece is why one of the reasons why I'm here it's a Southern Pacific that was bought by the Union Pacific and patched to the Union Pacific numbers they didn't want to spend the extra money to repaint the whole thing to Union Pacific so they just patched it with uh, their paint numbers and a lot of these Southern Pacific locomotives before the merger were pretty neglected so I wanted to model that Neg neg neglect neglection I guess is what the word I'm trying to spit out I think it turned out really well the rust on it is maybe a little overdone it's one of those things that it's it's fun doing and you really have a hard time knowing when to stop so it's, it could be a little overdone but I learned a, a lot with this so it's something that I will bring on to our uh, future builds together. And speaking of future builds, I am currently in the middle of the this Union Pacific SD70. something that uh, we'll be able to do together, this weathering of this locomotive. I have all the clear surfaces masked off already and I do have a light dusting from the airbrush already on it. So we're a little bit in front on that one. I'm using a, my glove to pick that up because the oils on your skin can reactivate the uh, acrylic paint that's on it and you can smear it. So here's a, an SD, SD90 from Union Pacific that I haven't started yet. It's something that uh, we can do together and um, I'll show you step by step how to weather it and get it looking good and natural like that. Just a, a quick comparison on the colors and the fading. You can see color difference there. Just a really light coat of acrylic brought that color down just just a little bit. Looks like it's been in the sun for a little bit and faded. So there's SD90. Another thing that I have over here my to-do shelf is a bulkhead flat car from Atlas that we will weather and put a load on it maybe, some pipe, something easy like a pipe or we can do something more difficult. When I uh, first started with the model rail, rail weathering I searched YouTube on videos on how to do it and how to easily do it and I came across a channel the uh, YouTubers name is Al Mayo and his YouTube channel is Monster Railroad. He had a lot of great videos on how to weather model railroad equipment. He hasn't done much lately. He's uh, got a full-time job now and he's selling uh, lighting kits, uh, LED lights for locomotives now, so he doesn't do a lot of videos. He, If you find his channel, I'll link all of his, his channel down in the description below. I'll be down there but he shows you an easy way with the airbrush and acrylic paints on how to weather and get good results so um, what I want to show you is some of my very beginning locomotives that I weathered now it takes time and practice to get good results to pleasing results 
to get results like this it takes some time and, and practice and some learning so here's one of my f first weathering jobs that I actually felt pretty comfortable and happy with and f obviously I know that I can do a lot better now but it's very simple just some airbrushing and a little bit of powder weathering powder for your, your, your soot stains there and that's that's the results if you look closely you can see right here the paint is missing that is from handling this like so and the heat from your fingers and the oil from your fingers have reactivated that paint and it's been rubbed off from constant handling so here's a uh, Atherin blue blocks engine that I, I did a long time ago that I think I brought it home from the club and I think we're gonna get, just clean it off and start over again with a clean slate we'll do that together here's the sister to that and once again you can see see where the paint has been fingered off there and also right down here on the fuel tank it's also messing there from where where it's been held and pulled and opened so I would really enjoy to do all this modeling with model railroading plastic modeling weathering I think it'll be a fun adventure for us to do together I'd like to teach you everything I know and maybe you can teach me we can learn something together I want to mention a couple of the uh, the youtubers that I've watched and learned from over the years I've mentioned a couple times Tony with Helgen 35 this is channel Helgen 35 he does a lot of vid video builds of course they aren't really you know World war war uh, war related or modeling oh, excuse me model railroading but the practices that he uses are easily transferable to model railroading and um, honestly he is who I learned the most from so I highly encourage that you go visit his channel once again link will be down in the description another modeler that I like to watch is Bobby Waldron with Genesis models now he he does a lot of model building weathering he, he has some how-to videos he teaches you about the the AK weathering uh, products he has his own website and it, it's a pay to watch website so the YouTube channel he has some step by steps but a lot of the step by steps are on his website but there still is a lot of free information on Genesis Model Railroad or excuse me Genesis Models uh, he is a professional modeler so it is very fun to watch him build and learn from him another modeler that I like to watch is Ted Hawksworth and he is with eModels eModels UK is the, the channel that I've seen him on he is cur he currently just finished a, a Panzer tank that is just huge and he does a beautiful job interior uh, the outside and that's completed he started on another large model um, let's see Ted and Tony are both and uh, you can find them both on eModels UK and their own channels another model uh, model builder that I like is Mr. Fox with modeling model making guru uh, he builds a lot of those cute toy Gundam robot things but 
he does a great job. He, I believe, in my opinion, he's a, a professional modeler also. He recently, well, within a year, you have to go back on his channel history, but he built a very large World War II U-boat, and he is a commission build for a client, and he made it look just beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. So I really enjoy seeing his work, even if he does build those cute little robot Gundam thingies. So, once again, as I mentioned, the, the links will be down in the description. So please, please go check those guys out. I am not a professional. I just think that I can barely do it good enough to make it look realistic. And that's what I want to teach you, is how to make something look pleasing and realistic. And the easiest way to do it. So, I appreciate you coming. Look for more videos in the future. And hopefully we will learn and discover and build and weather together. Thanks for coming. Please subscribe and like the videos, and we will see you on the next one.